Satellite photos reveal the horrifying scope of China's latest COVID surge. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. China is suffering from a massive COVID surge. Again, the Chinese Communist Party makes the same mistakes so many times, I could probably go on vacation and rerun old episodes of China Uncensored and you barely notice. Right now in one province, 90% of people have contracted COVID. This is a crisis for the Chinese Communist Party. For years, they locked down the country with the brutal zero COVID policy. The end result was still a massive COVID outbreak. So they made millions of people suffer all in the name of protecting them from suffering. Yep, sounds like communism, all right. Now keep in mind, the World Health Organization says the current explosion of cases is not the result of the abandonment of zero COVID. The current surge was happening before the party backed off of zero COVID. The party simply lost the ability to keep zero COVID measures in place. So the party was like, hey, let's just pretend this wasn't our fault. And while we're at it, let's just keep pretending Tiananmen Square never happened. And there's no genocide going on in Xinjiang. I'm not sure if China is located in Asia or in the land of make-believe. The party is lying about the current number of dead, as the party did throughout the entire pandemic. Official numbers put the death toll at 5,200 nationwide. That's for the entire pandemic. Over three years, that is transparently a lie. Projections made by international experts put the real death toll closer to 5,000 people each day. Some models predict more than 1 million people will die from COVID in China this year. There are a variety of reasons why this is happening. First, Chinese vaccines aren't very effective, even according to top Chinese officials. And considering how boldly they lie when top Chinese officials say their vaccines aren't very effective, there's a chance it's because it's actually just Gatorade. Turns out electrolytes can only do so much. But the main problem, according to Mai He, a professor of pathology and immunology at Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis, is that due to zero COVID, most Chinese people's immune systems have not been primed. According to Yan Zhonghuang, Senior Fellow for Global Health at the Council on Foreign Relations, China was so proud of its COVID control measures until spring of 2021. But look at it now. Everything has fallen apart and its pandemic response model has become a laughing stock. This is going to affect not just the leaders, but the legitimacy of the regime itself. Because despite the Communist Party's lies, people are seeing the bodies pile up for themselves. And now, New satellite imagery gives us a clue just how bad it is. I'll tell you more after the break. Welcome back. COVID is surging in China. Hospitals are overrun. This is a mortuary in Shanghai. Extra body bags are strewn all over the floors. Here's another mortuary in Liaoning province that's running out of room. The person recording the video says they needed to send bodies to other locations. This is how bad it's getting. Scalpers in Shanghai sold places in line at funeral homes for $300 a pop to grieving relatives trying to get cremation slots. And then were probably immediately hired by Ticketmaster. I like the cut of your jib. And yet the Chinese Communist Party says less than 40 people have died in China of COVID since zero COVID officially ended on December 7th. Right. Well. New satellite photos give us an idea of just how bad things are. Maxar Technologies provide the Washington Post with images that show increased activity at funeral homes in several major Chinese cities. One funeral home receptionist the Post contacted said, I have worked here for six years and it has never been this busy. The phone has basically not stopped ringing. She said their freezers were full and their eight incinerators were working 24-7. And if you were wondering, yes, that is unusual. And remember, that's just one funeral parlor. And yet the CCP says only 40 people have died nationwide. Come on. At the very least, if they're going to shovel propaganda, they could make it believable. Like say they did this to provide job security to funeral homes and doctors. 
You're welcome. Cremation is the main way deceased in Chinese cities are handled. The way it works is when a family member dies, they have to call a funeral parlor or a third party to pick up the body. The family then usually goes in person with a death certificate and an ID card to register a time for cremation. That's why it's significant that this funeral parlor in Beijing had to build a new parking lot to handle the increased traffic. Staff at the funeral home were working overtime, cremating as many as 150 bodies a day. This photo from Nanjing, a major city northwest of Shanghai, also shows a surge of vehicles. And footage from a nearby funeral home shows a long line of white vans commonly used as hearses. Besides how shocking and grim this is, imagine what all these extra cremations are doing for the air quality. It was bad enough when the smog was from vehicles and burning coal. Now, people are breathing in uncles. Huh. I think that may have been the darkest joke in the history of this show. That's how bad the situation is. Here's a funeral home in Kunming in Yunnan province. You can see an increase in traffic and crowds of people queuing outside. And video emerged showing how crowded the facility was. That's one busy funeral parlor. Again, just say this was done for job security. It's still a lie, but one that actually has some merit. Many funeral parlors across China have suspended memorial services because of the surge. They've essentially just become cremation factories at this point. Meanwhile, Liang Wan Nian, a top advisor on the government's coronavirus response team, said it is only after the wave when we can calculate the case fatality rate and death rate more accurately. Well, I think you can calculate it good enough right now to say it was more than 5,000 total deaths during the entire pandemic. Don't need to wait on that. But one thing's for sure. The Chinese regime will keep covering things up, even if it kills them over and over again. On the bright side, with all these repeats, maybe it means I'll finally get to take a vacation. And China Uncensored would not be possible without support from viewers like you, either by liking and subscribing, sharing the show with friends and family, or buying one of these awesome I turned a blind eye to ethnic cleansing in China and all I got was this slightly cheaper t-shirt t-shirts from our merch store. Buy them with the link below. And of course, a special thanks to everyone who gives direct support on our exclusive social media platform, Locals. Those are the fans I call the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army, who join us in the fight against the Chinese Communist Party. As a thank you to them, I respond to their questions. Today's question comes from Drunk Flygon. Love the shows you run here and glad to help you guys on Locals. So question, in light of all the controversies around China and the CCP, has the CCP actually done anything good for the people of China in the past five years? Now that's a very interesting question. I'll expand it past five years though. Has the CCP done anything good for China? Now this is a key part of Communist Party propaganda. It's hard to look at China in the 50s and 60s and not think things are so much better today. The trick though is that things were bad in China for so long precisely because of communist policies. Things only started to get materially better once the party backed off on things like communes and state-run work units, and allowed people to actually start businesses and make money. But typically the people who really made lots of money were party members and their families, not your average Joe. See what I did there? Very clever. But the Chinese regime also used a lot of the foreign investment coming into China to finance its systems of oppression mass surveillance, internet censorship, and a sprawling police force. Because ultimately, the party's only aim is to secure its power. Compared to what China would be like if Chinese people had freedom and rule of law, life under the CCP is at best a sputtering shadow of what China could be. Thanks for your question and your support, Drunk Flygon. And thank you for watching. If you want to support China Uncensored, you can with a small monthly contribution over at chinauncensored.locals.com. Link is below. China Uncensored would not exist without your support. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.